I've been thinking a lot lately, and one of the things that happens when I think a lot, there's a lot of changes going to take place. One of the things that we need to take in consideration is, are we doing everything we possibly can to make our future better? And are we making the correct decisions to erase many of the things that have kept us from being the best that we possibly could be so that our future is even greater than it was in our own minds. Now, I'm not sure about you, but to me, uh, your mindset makes a tremendous amount of difference when you're architecting your life, when you're orchestrating your life, when you're composing your life. Because if you don't, take control of the path that you have in front of you, then what's going to happen is the path in front of you is going to control your steps instead of you controlling the path in front of you. And that is not good because many times the path in front of you has obstacles. It has calamities. It has cliffs. It has swamps. It has danger ahead. And because of the wisdom that God has given each and every one of us to be able to be wise, he tells us to be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. What a, what a crazy way to say it, but a beautiful way to say it. Be as wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. Wow. Wow. Now we're in a time where there's a lot of people who are afraid what's happening around what's happening around the corner and that's what i mean about our path the paths that we take if we don't direct our paths if we don't have control of that path and that path controls our future instead of us controlling the path to our future then those calamities you can expect those calamities to take place you can expect a lot of tough times ahead now, I think it's Matthew 24 that talks about wars, rumors of wars, and all the things that are happening today that we see on the news, that we see in social media, that we see people talking about, we see all the corruption, we see everything. But, and I'm talking to myself more than anyone else right now, we can post, we can upload, we can do anything we want to do on social media, but in reality, are we making a difference? Are we making our future better? Or are we making our future worse because we're spending time on things that don't really accomplish much other than us feeling better after we've posted something? If we direct our life in the direction of, I'm going to do this because it makes me feel good. Wow, when you put it that way, that doesn't sound good. But if we do things just to make ourselves feel good for a short moment of time, instead of doing things, and sometimes, yes, doing things that we don't necessarily want to do at times so that we have a future that makes us feel good for a long time, for a long time, then we're making the correct decision in our path ahead. So the reason I say that is simply this. I've been as guilty as anyone as far as spending my time on keeping up with uh, modern events, different things that are taking place. And um, yes, am I concerned? Absolutely, absolutely, I am concerned. But I should be focused on establishing everything that I need to establish here on the farm to get everything prepared for me and my family, make sure that my business is going in the right direction, make sure everything is going like it should. That should be my focus, not to envelop and engulf myself and to allow myself to be absorbed with my time or anything else 
doing things that are not productive, even though they make me feel good for a short moment. Short moment feel goods never, ever pan out to make the rest of your life feel good. Never does. Now, only time you can do short bursts of anything that makes you feel good that you want to make a change, let that be on your knees when you pray or let that be at the voting booth when you vote. Let that be in the home that you live with the family that you have and spending time with them to make sure that they feel the love and the compassion and the sincerity around the security that you're giving them. But don't allow yourself to ever not your way down in life to where the thing that makes you feel good is just making a post. Now, I don't spend a lot of time on social media. A lot of people think I do. But I really don't go around and scout and stalk and look at everybody's posts, what have you. I make a few posts, I get off. I go in and like the comments, read the comments on my posts, I get off. Don't get offended at me if you don't see me posting a lot of comments on your post or liking your post so much. I just don't spend that much time on social media other than the things that I post and things that I just want to say and want to get out there. And sometimes those things are political. Sometimes those things are uh, about the farm. Sometimes those things are about the business. Sometimes those things are about my passion. Sometimes those things are about my family. Or sometimes more than anything else, most, most of the time, it's about nature. It's about the beauty of nature. It's not one of the most beautiful scenes here today with the clouds, but I can tell you, I love it. I love it even whether this is bright orange and fuchsia and all the colors that I normally see sometimes, or if it's gray and peach. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. God is the one that we give thanks to for our blessings. And God expects us to be attentive to our future and attentive to taking care of our families. By the way, did you know that the word of God says the man who doesn't take care of his family is worse than an infidel? Let that sink in for just a moment. A man that does not take care of his family is worse than than an infidel. What is an infidel? A non-believer. A man that doesn't take care of his family is worse, not just as, as bad as a sinner. A believer can be a sinner. But an infidel is someone who doesn't even believe. An infidel is someone who doesn't have any belief in God at all. So a man who doesn't take care of his own family is worse, worse than an infidel. I don't want ever, ever find myself in life where someone can say about Jeff Welch that he didn't take care of his family first. My family has always been first to me and always will be. And I praise God for the opportunities he has given me in life. And I praise the Lord for my family. I praise the Lord for the people that I have brought into my family. And I look at them as family, even though we're maybe we're not blood relative, but we're family. We all have those, right? Someone said once that God chooses our, our relatives, but we choose our family. And um, I think that's true a lot of times, a lot of times. Anyway, here on Welsh Family Homestead, we have a lot of dreams, a lot of, a lot of passion and dreams. And, um, and the only way we're going to accomplish those dreams is to stay focused and to know that our heart is in the right place. At the same time, me as a CEO of Biotonus, Biotonus uh, Global, Biotonus USA, and Biotonus Corp, I'm the CEO of that company. And, um, and I can just tell you that I've, I'm blessed to be able to say that. I'm blessed to be able to stand here and and be thankful and blessed that uh, that my dear friend in uh, in Europe uh, contacted me and asked me to be the CEO of that company. I'm going on over two years now as a CEO of that uh, of that dream. So um, let's count our blessings. Let's look at the future ahead. Let's plan out our path. Remember, there's never a plan that doesn't 
first start with an intention. So if you're planning things out and you don't have an intention, you're pushing the rope. You're not in the right path. Make sure that you have an intention, that you're intentful, you're intentional going into a certain direction. You build a plan around it and then you aim all of your efforts toward accomplishing those plans. Action, traction, right? First intention, then action, then traction. God bless. See you on the other side.